Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I upgraded a little bit. I actually got my wife off board so I can kind of explain things a little bit better. Um, and I was able to dig up my old um, research poster when I did a presentation at the College of Staten Island um, under the um, facility of the American Museum of Natural History Hidden Planetarium under NASA Space Grant and the National Science Foundation. Um, my paper was on proplids, aka protoplanetary disks. So I want to actually explain to you guys what is so cool about this. Um, pretty much what a proplid is, is exactly what it sounded like, protoplanetary disk. It is a newborn star that is the possibility of a solar system forming around it. So the way that it starts out pretty much is we took all these images from the HST ACS archive, um, which ha is from the Orion Nebula. So Orion Nebula formed from the death of a star. When a star dies, it actually will expand very far and then it's going to collapse. And then once it collapses, it then breaks off into a nebula. What actually happens is all the elements start to build up and the pressure in the star that is, it releases this shell of elements, molecules, gaseous material, and that sort of beautiful nebula is that you guys see that I post lots of images of. Um, now what starts to happen is being in this massive cloud of dust, you start to have little pockets where um, really high levels of gravity start to collect, where really high like um, areas of material start to collect. And what starts to happen is these areas will start to smash together. Lots of um, gravity will start to pull on it. And this starts to cause um, a, a rotation. And through this, a star starts to form. This is how newborn stars are formed. Newborn stars are just formed from other material, which is from the death of a star. It's a whole recycling process. It's absolutely beautiful. And when a newborn star forms, what starts to happen is from it rotating, it starts to attract all nearby material from this nebula. And when it starts to attract nearby mat uh, material, it starts to form kind of something like a bubble, which I actually have in a little diagram down here. I'll zoom in for you guys. Um, and I'll actually draw it out for you. So you have S for star. So when it's a newborn star, it's really hot, really rapidly rotating, and it starts to cause this effect where nearby elements start to get attracted to this star, this newborn baby star. And what starts to happen here, because this newborn star is spinning like crazy, spinning super fast, it's really hot, it just starts to attract elements nearby that were in this nebula because remember that these stars are inside of nebula they are the proplids are inside of many many nebulae um i'm referring to the orion nebula in this case so what starts to happen is these all these nearby elements start to accrete and accumulate around this newborn star hence the name accretion disk um and when this accretion disk starts to form if there's a possibility that maybe just maybe um, a lot of different materials, rocky materials, can start to collide with one another and possibly form planets. And that would be the coolest thing ever. But one huge thing as to what I was referring to in my um, research paper that I was measuring was a mass loss rate. Now, the mass loss rate is actually caused by this really, really crazy thing that starts to happen. You have a star... Um, it's rapidly rotating, so what starts to happen when things are spinning really fast is there's wind, winds that start to come out, which is just called stellar winds. And through these stellar winds, um, it starts to blow apart all this material that was just accumulating the possibility of planets forming. So when it starts to blow away all this material, um, it's obviously going to separate from the accretion disk that started to form. Hence, the shape that you see in a lot of images, just like on my poster um, of proplids, is it starts to have this kind of like bubble shape, where it's like this, and then whoosh, and it goes like that. And this is just because of stellar winds here blowing out, and then the next thing you have to worry about is radiation, because these stars are not alone. Um, inside a nebula, you have many, many stars. 
um, thousands of stars, newborn stars, and you also have nearby really massive, massive stars that are already older, and these have radiation, and that radiation starts to accumulate right up. My videos keep stopping. Um, pretty much just what starts to happen now is you have this radiation from a nearby O star. You also have this bubble that's starting to form caused by the stellar winds blowing apart all this material that was just collecting for a possibility of a solar system forming or planets forming. Um, so my main problem was I was trying to measure at what rate does this need to maybe not spin as quickly in order to cause stellar winds blowing apart this accretion disk and what distance can this newborn star be from the nearby O star that's causing it to like cause radiation this is a nearby really really massive star and this is the radiation what distance can this be where this newborn star can actually have a chance to form an accretion disk and a possible solar system what chance so that pretty much was my experiment. That was what my, my poster was about. I can do another video based on all of um, the equations that I used, um, the code that I used through Python, um, and I can discuss some you know more detailed stuff. But for now, I kind of just wanted to give a brief on what protoplanetary disks are. So stay tuned and check out my next video. And I'm just kind of like a head right now that's talking to you guys. So yeah, okay, bye guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye!